After the recent Nintendo Direct focused on Splatoon 2, I couldn't wait to play it. It just looked so fun and I needed to try it out for myself. Fortunately, I didn't have to wait long as Nintendo supplied us with a review code at the beginning of the weekend, and since then I've been playing it as much as I can, which really still isn't enough. That's because the servers won't go online for a few more days, so even though I can explore Inkopolis Square, there's not much I can do in it. But that does leave the new single-player campaign available, and I wanted to offer my early thoughts on it before I dove into the online multiplayer. Now, I'm not going to be getting into spoilers, and I can't talk about anything beyond the third boss, but right off the bat, Splatoon 2 just controls beautifully. I may have had trouble adjusting to using the Pro Controller during the test fire, but I took to the controls immediately this time around. It's as simple as ever to target what you want and splat away. And if you're familiar at all with the original Splatoon's campaign, you'll be immediately at home here. Each world contains a number of invisible kettles that must be inked to be unlocked as levels, so you can then rescue the captured zapfish. But there are a few new tricks to the process. The worlds, while not huge, contain a bit more that's worth exploring. There are balloons to pop in order to get a few extra power eggs, and each world has its own sunken scroll and sardinium to find, just like every level. The Sunken Scrolls offer a bit of lore to help flesh out the world of the Inklings, but they're more concerned with covering what happened in the two years since the original than providing new details of the past. The Sardinium is a new step required to power up your weapons. Not only do you need the right amount of power eggs, but this collectible as well. Working in tandem, they can be used to increase your ink tank, unlock more sub-weapons, or make the weapons more powerful, as we just said. And the range of weapons available in the single player is much greater. Eventually, Sheldon from Ammo Knights will appear and ask you to use a particular weapon, and the stages are designed in such a way to help you better learn that weapon. Ostensibly, the campaign is meant to prepare players for the online, and I feel like it does a much better job of that in Splatoon 2. They can be replayed and cleared with every weapon in the game, but I like that they force you to try out these weapons. I did feel like I got a little better with the Splat Charger, when usually I'm awful with it. Whether this newfound confidence actually transfers to the multiplayer is left to be seen, but I like that each weapon type gets the spotlight for at least a little bit. The levels themselves are linear, but well-crafted, always introducing a new element or enemy to change things up before mixing and matching to increase the challenge later. The new grind rails, bouncy mats, and boost pads all feel like natural extensions of the gameplay and made certain stages that much more exciting. And, of course, the bosses are as great as ever, really showing the creativity of Splatoon 2. I was always hyped to take on a new one, but I don't really want to give too much about them away before the review. But rest easy, they definitely have some standouts. Really, the only part that feels like a noteworthy downgrade is the music, at least what I heard in the single player. The new tunes feel lower key this time around, losing the bombacity of the original. They're not all bad, and are certainly fine songs on their own, but something about them felt lesser in conjunction with the campaign. There's still a lot for me to see in Splatoon 2, though. I may have finished the story, but the real star of the show awaits. Still, based on these first impressions, fans of Splatoon and newcomers alike will have little to worry about when it comes to Splatoon 2. I just can't wait to try out the multiplayer and see how it compares but you can find out our full thoughts on that when our review of Splatoon 2 goes live on July 18th. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more on Splatoon and other things gaming.